Denna has recently announced a $50 million grant program, which is very exciting. How is this fund structured? And can you share examples of some of the projects that have already benefited from it? Yeah, so we're excited about this grants program. It, it has to do with some of the unique nature of how of our economic model and the fact that we, you know, the flexibility that we have in terms of using the way the economics favor us being able to directly invest in projects. You know, we've been around for a long time and we're still able to support projects as they come on chain. So I'm very proud of that. And that's something that's unique to Cadena. I mean, we already have, I believe it's the fairest token allocation of pretty much any major project in, in the sense of insiders versus, you know, the vast majority of the coins come out of mining. Right. So it's a whole different scenario. And it also means that we didn't hand out all the tokens right when we launched, but instead those are still coming, you know, they're still being uh, released to the foundation so that we can continue to fund projects. That's the kind of economic structuring of it. The focus is on, is on RWA as well as uh, AI is another, we're, we're interested in AI and then, uh, and then stuff more in ecosystem development and infrastructure. Right. And, uh, you know, a very exciting project that's coming on is Sushi Swap. But we have a bunch of other, I mean, it's it, unfortunately like the, in literally a week, we're going to be like talking about like a, a bunch of really exciting projects as we, uh, as we, as we move ahead with our EVM plans and our testnet launch. But yeah, we've been able to, uh, we've been able to secure some really, uh, we just signed a deal with Curvelock, who's a very, very tech forward RWA issuer. The grant program is something I'm very proud of and very excited about. Yeah, and I think the fact that 50% of the funds are going to go specifically to RWAs is really exciting. Can you tell me more about what role you see RWAs playing in advancing blockchain technology? Oh, it's, it's already there, right? And it's what I was talking about before in the sense that, I mean, I think Bit, uh, BlackRock's Biddle was kind of the watershed moment. Um, yeah, everyone was like, BlackRock, are you yeah. crazy? Like, <laughs> Yeah, Larry Fink turning into a D-Gen. Nobody saw that coming. <laughs> no, it was um, not on the bingo card. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't. And it's funny because, you know, we were working on a project very similar to that uh, with a company called USCF. They're a big ETN issuer in the, you know, leading up to our launch in 2020. Annalise was at uh, various places, including Arca, where she was working on all these things. So the, this wasn't a new idea. The idea right. of like taking like Spider or, you know, S&P or any of these things and trying to like make a token because the benefits are clear. I mean, um, it's a huge uh, increase in the addressable market for these products, uh, you know, as opposed to just stocks, right? Well, one, it's international. Two, uh, there's a 24-hour market. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then finally, once crypto really took off in, you know, 2021 or so, and started, you know, the, the amount of money in crypto and the amount of transactions in crypto, you know, started getting attention from uh, the rest of the financial world. It also meant that you had all this money locked up in various protocols and various tokens. Right. And that was the, you know, so that thing I was talking about before, because there are huge savings here. There, you know, getting back to that topic, there <laughs> are a lot of reasons why RWAs are incredible from like an efficiency but, but the real reason why that they're actually happening is because there are markets, you know, and in the case of Biddle, you know, they were able to immediately, you know, it was a classic kind of trap capital situation where you had, honestly, a lot of it was projects, you know, like Cadena, where they have a lot of stuff either locked up in stable coins or locked up in their own protocol mm -hmm. token. And, you know, and it's all sitting on chain and this gave them an ability to diversify on chain. So, you know, so that was an immediate win but then just what I was talking about before, international market, 24-hour access, these are the kind of things that actually like grow a market and make it into a bigger thing. And that's not to say it wasn't without risk. So, you know, BlackRock and Franklin Templeton and some of the other more forward-looking institutions, you know, they're benefiting from it, but, you know, you have to hand it to them for also having the uh, risk tolerance to really like move forward. The other thing, of course, I think that changed things was also the Bitcoin ETF, of course. And yeah. so there was just this way that all of a sudden these worlds that seem completely incompatible with each other, all of a sudden now we're like, you know, talking to each other every day. And, you know, and that's just one kind of RWA. I mean, RWAs, you know, you can tokenize real estate. You know, it's, it's stuff that we've been talking about forever yeah. that is inherent to smart contracts. This idea that you can, 
that you can really innovate in the product space. You can really bring out new uh, instruments and products and you don't have to wait. You can, you, know, you can roll them out on a blockchain and nobody can stop you. So, and this was some of the things we were trying to say back in the 2010s too, is that this is a real, this is a way to develop new products. This is a way to un unlock new revenue streams. But, you know, somebody had to take that plunge and, and then the real missing piece was, and it needed to be on public blockchain. So that's right. where RWA has really changed the narrative is that now you have every single institution figuring out how they're going to use public, you know, use this resource that is public blockchains. And, you know, so that war just came to an end and now, every, now we're friends. Yeah. Now we're <laughs> friends and, you know, and, and that's the way it should be. And this is what we've been looking forward to at Cadena. So we were, you know, so we're very committed to supporting projects and the mark, you know, the opportunity is huge. It's something between like two and 30 trillion estimated, right. how, you know, so, you know, again, that thing of like, you know, is there, is there money to be made? Oh yeah. There's so much money to be made here. And, uh, you know, and again, you know, the main thing is that you just need to have systems that can really handle uh, all the trading. Really. 